Good morning and welcome to Victory Church. If you're a visitor, we trust you are going to enjoy it with us. This morning, we have different segments joined together to bring you the service via YouTube. We are still going to do updates to the congregation from the eldership via WhatsApp and YouTube. And you're also welcome to visit our website, victorychristianchurch.co.za, especially if you are a visitor and you would like to connect with us. We would love to connect with you. We have two birthdays in the congregation this week. On Tuesday the 31st, it's Glenn's birthday. And on Wednesday the 1st of April, it's Derek's birthday. Happy birthday, guys. And we will now be going into a time of worship. As Father God, we just come in the name of Jesus again. Lord, we want to thank you for who you are, Lord. We want to thank you for the grace that you've extended to us, Lord God, in this time. Thank you, Lord God, that we can even pray into, Lord God, healings right now in Jesus' name, Lord God. We pray as we sing and as we pray and as we trust with you, Lord God, that even in people's houses, Lord God, that listen to this, see this, hear this, whatever, Lord, Lord, that they would experience your presence, that they would experience healing, Lord God, that they would experience you, Lord, and that we would be able to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord God. We honor you for that, Lord Jesus. We glorify you today, Lord God. We glorify you, Lord. Be exalted, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All creation cries to you. Worship in and spirit and in truth. Glory to the faithful one, Jesus Christ, God's Son. All creation gives you praise, as you alone are truly great. The whole earth sing, the whole earth sing. 
soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship Your holy name. So the saints and angels, they bow before your throne. And all the elders cast their crowns before the Lamb of God and sing, you are worthy of it all. Day and night, night and day, let incense 
for the grace and the mercy, Lord, that you've extended to your people, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, even as I'm reminded of the Passover, Lord, where you said to your people, go into your houses and put the blood on the doors and the angel of death will pass over you. And Lord, I just, I thank you for your people, Lord, as we're going into our houses, that we can experience healing, we can experience grace, Lord God, we can experience your love, we can experience... Yeah, Lord, everything that we need, Lord God, where a lot of people are sitting potentially saying, how is this going to be, come out on the other end in a good way. And Lord, we thank you that you have plans to prosper us, not to harm us, Lord God. You've gone before us, Lord. you prepared a way. So we thank you that this morning we can come and praise you. We can worship you knowing, Lord God, that you've gone before us, Jesus. Thanks for the incredible privilege of being invited into your homes to share the Word of God and to be encouraged by uh, not only myself, but to become aware of being encouraged by the Spirit of God as He confirms the Word of God for us. And so just some family news. Uh, it's exciting to see the growth that has happened in the life of the church. And so just before we go anywhere, I just want to take this opportunity to thank all of those that have served so diligently, so well, and in such an incredible way. And I don't want to mention anybody, but every one of you know who you are and all that you did. And I really believe that with the heart that, is, that I've seen in you, 
is that you've done it for the glory of God. You've done it for your enjoyment of God. But thank you that we all benefit for the hard work that many of you have put on so that we as a body of believers can continue to worship and exalt and enjoy the one and only true God and that we can continue to do this together. And so I want to encourage us from the Word of God today. And uh, what I want to encourage us from is, uh, I title this message, Sonship Through the Spirit. And uh, it's actually quite ironic in a time such as this, that it's a wonderful opportunity for us to become more conscious of the spiritual realm. And uh, so we know the pandemic that we're all in, and I don't want to talk much about it, but I just want to use it as an example where they're talking about this virus and uh, the reality of the havoc that it's uh, causing on the earth today and some of the tragedy and the loss and our hearts go out to all of those that have lost people and those that are going through, those that are still going to go through some of the horrors that this virus is bringing upon people, people who by this you would know that you're my disciple, that you love one another. So as the disciples of God, this doesn't please us that people are having to go through this, but it doesn't change the reality of who God is. And so the Bible says that God is spirit, but this virus poses itself as something of a spirit. In other words, the, the, what they're saying to us is you can have it for two weeks and not know that you've got it and that you can spread it to others. This is why uh, we've been put into confinement uh, in our love for one another that we don't spread this virus. Um, but the reality, there's a greater truth that I want to emphasize this morning. And like uh, you can possibly not be aware that you have the virus, my prayer is that you don't, and that you never do have it. But there's uh, also a reality that we can come to at this stage is we could have the Holy Spirit. And if you're born again, you do. Uh, but we could be ignoring him. We could not be conscious of the person and the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And it's a great time to, to become aware of the fear that wants to visit us, the fear that wants to come upon us at the time like this, but that we would use that fear to drive us to God. We would make the fear the servant and not the master. And how we can do that is to understand the Holy Spirit. And so let's go to Scripture and just get some leading from Scripture in what Scripture is saying to us. And so let's go to Romans 8 verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Two very things that the scriptures are talking to us about here. For you did not receive the, body, the spirit again to be in the bondage of fear, but you've received it that you can cry, Abba, Father. But also what verse 14 is saying to us, it's a time to, to recognize, to become conscious. Are you led by the Spirit of God or are you just led predominantly through your human reasoning? It's a wonderful time to surrender and to yield to the Lordship of Christ and the Lordship of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Verse 16 says, The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God and if children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. The Galatians 3 verse 26 says to us, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. This is not a time to doubt. This is not a time to fear. This is a time to be confident in the finished work of Christ on your behalf on the cross, and that you can appropriate the fullness of the atonement on your life in those areas of your life where you find that you're lacking. But I'd like us to refer to Philippians 1 verse 9 in the Message Bible, uh, which is an incredible encouragement to us. It says, so this is my prayer, that your love will flourish. And so if you're taking notes, here's the first thing that you need to do, that your love would flourish. 
And then the second thing that the Message Bible says to us, that you will not only love much, but that you would love well. That's a wonderful thing to work out with God. Learn to love appropriately. And so there's certain things that we've had to look at in this time of how to love appropriately. You need to use your head and test your feelings. Oh, is that not wonderful advice? You need to use your head. You need to love intelligently. So that your love is sincere and intelligent and not sentimental gush. Live a lover's life. Circumspect. I looked up this word circumspect. And it says in the, in the Bible dictionaries, take heed, take action, and make sure. Take heed, take action, and make sure. Be decisive. Be, um, take, take control of your life. And then it goes on and says, be, not only let your life be circumspect, but let it be um, exemplary. A, a life that Jesus would be proud of. This is we can, Ken Blanchard in his book, Lead Like Jesus, would encourage us and says, uh, become the audience of one. Start. This is a wonderful time for us to train ourselves that we wouldn't live out of envy, out of the fear of man, fear of failure, fear of rejection, but that we would live in being uh, the audience of one and that so that our lives are before God and um, God who sets us up for success, God who has made provision for us and given us life. So live circumspect, circumspect, exemplary, a life that Jesus will be proud of. And then verse 11 says to us, bountiful in fruit from the soul. I'll speak a little bit more about that just now. But making Jesus Christ attractive to all, getting everyone involved in the glory and the praise of God. Is this not a wonderful directive for us? Not only for these next days where we are uh, having to be in quarantine in our love for one another to prevent the spread of this virus, but that we would be trained by the Spirit of God, that when we come out of this time, that we will be able to make Christ attractive to all and that we will be, get everyone involved in the glory and the praise of God. I'd like to speak a little bit about... Uh, that part of the scripture where it talks about um, bountiful in the fruits of the soul. When, before man comes to God, he comes to God with pride and fear. And uh, what the work of the Holy Spirit is in our lives is to exchange that pride and fear for humility and vulnerability. And so our pride can be arrogant, our pride can be insecure, and um, Whichever way that goes in our lives, there's certain areas in our lives that the Holy Spirit has cleaned out, but there's also other areas in our lives that He hasn't cleaned out. But this is a time such as that. And so one of the things that uh, we need to do, we need to have the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus, to be cognizant, to be aware, to be alert of your thinking and, and helping each other in our homes that our thinking is loyal to God. This is not a time to listen to the prophets of doom. This is not a time to listen to the wrong things. This is the time to have faith in God and His Word. Because faith is who He is, what He says and what He does. This is a time to be led by that. This is a time to be trained, to live like that. This is a time to learn to live out of your own faith and not out of the faith of others, or off of the faith of others. And so... Make sure that your soul is conditioned at this time, that your soul recognizes its pride, recognizes its fear, and that uh, it, you surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. But the ultimate thing that we're looking at here in um, the, the working of the soul, it's not something we can do for ourselves, but it is something that the Word and the blood and the Spirit will do for us if we will surrender and yield that, that we would go with what the Holy Spirit wants to do in our lives. He knows what needs to be changed in your life. And so I'm always reminded that scripture in the Message Bible that says, if you go and rebuild your life, you will rebuild a barn that you're just going to have to tear down again. So let the Spirit of God rebuild you. But you need to know what the Holy Spirit's going to be doing. 
is going to be helping you that Christ would be formed in you. That is the purpose of this thing. It's not to become a better person. It's not, it's not anything else. The, the goal, the apostolic goal, is that we would make sure that the purpose of the Ephesians 4 giftings is that Christ can be formed in us and get everybody else on the same page of loving and delighting in God. Remember that repentance is turning from the delighting in all else and you have a wonderful opportunity at this time where the world is not able to make its demands on you. You've been separated, set apart, that you can repent. Repentance is turning from delighting in others and everything else to find satisfaction in God. And this is the work of the soul. This is what you want to do. You want your soul to be bathed, to be uh, submitted, to be impermeated, to be filled with the beauty and the splendor and the majesty of God. And so how are we going to make Jesus attractive to others? Is that the, when the work of the word and the spirit works in our lives, we would, when somebody comes at, sees us come out of this thing and they see that we are kinder, that they would say to us, I notice that you become kinder. You would be able to say, well, it's something that I saw in Jesus what I saw in the scriptures, like Ephesians 2 verse 8, it's the loving kindness and the goodness of God that brings us to repentance. It's, it's not that God, we love God first, but it's that God loved us first and that um, he loved us with his great love and he made us come alive with that love. But he made us come alive, alive with that love. So there's the opportunity for the soul to surrender, the unsurrendered surrendered soul to surrender to the Lordship of Jesus, but to the beauty, to the majesty, to the magnificence, to the courage that our Savior had when he went through much worse than what you and I will ever have to go through. I'd like to just share from the Message Bible as well, 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5. It says this to us, test yourselves, make sure that you're solid in the faith. Don't drift along, taking everything for granted. Give yourself regular checkups. You need first-hand evidence, not mere heresy, that Jesus Christ is in you. Test it out. If you fail the test, do something about it. <laughs> I think it's great humor from the Word of God, but also great truth. And um, I really just want to encourage you in this time. Uh, come out of this time um, with the word undone. Uh, undone because you've seen God, because you've experienced God. It's a time for you to actually pick up uh, great literature uh, on the attributes of God. It's a great time to get to know God through his character, his kindness, his graciousness, the fact that he's truth, the fact that he's patient, the fact that not only is he gracious and kind, but there's also a severity in God. What, did, what does that mean? Uh, that normally comes to us, he chastises those whom he loves. Uh, but it's a time that, as I said to you, you would come out of this time permeated, filled, saturated, undone as a lover of God and being able to help others to fall in love with him too. Um, let your fears be your servants. Let your fears drive you to the splendor of God. And um, I want you to be human at this time. Uh, if, if somebody says to you, don't fear, well, that would be great if it was possible. But the thing is, we have been given an ability from God, an ability to fear. But that fear is predominantly to keep us safe and to prevent us from doing stupid things that would shorten our lives or get us in harm's way. Uh, but sometimes through misconceptions and believing lies, that fear can become our enemy and not our friend. Discover these fears. Um, take, the, take every thought captive. Um, and so I want to encourage you, to, uh, take every thought captive and, and make, make every stronghold in your life surrender to the Lordship of Christ Jesus. Don't let your strongholds rule you at a time like us. Just surrender to the Lordship of Jesus. But once again, I want to, I want to reiterate, I want to say again and again, um, if anything, if anything happens in this time, let it be this, that Christ would be formed in you. Uh, but let it be done so 
not because of the law. Let it be done so because you, because the Spirit of God, the Word of God, and maybe some very good authors and some very good books, you can get hold of me if you want the names of them, uh, that you can just study the nature and the character of God. Get to know God. This is a wonderful time. There's very little competition in that, where, as I said to you before, there's so much that the world wants to do and keep us busy and keep us away from getting to know God better. One of the things that you can do in helping your soul, in leadership circles, they will talk about emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is actually a wonderful tool. And one of the tools in emotional intelligence is being self-aware. Now, we need to be careful of this term uh, because what I'm saying to you is that I want you to become more aware of God. I want you to become more aware of the leading of the Holy Spirit. But pride and fear are always things that want to um, push God out. And so Kate Blanchard in his book, Lead Like Jesus, uses an acronym of ego. And so that word ego means um, edge God out or exalt God only. And so we've seen from the scripture, we want to come out of this thing exalting God only. But find out what are the things in your life that want to edge God out. What are the things that are competing for the affections that belong to God and God alone? And so um, self-awareness wants us to become aware. What is the things that are edging God out and wanting us to decisively, through our choices, exalt God only? And so I want to just share something about what they say to us in, in, um, in this being self-aware is the ability to recognize and to understand your moods your emotions and your drives as well as their effects on others and then you need to manage yourself. This is the ability to control, to redirect disruptive impulses and moods and the, and the ability to suspend judgments. Those moments where you just want to say things off of the top of your heads to take those thoughts captive and to think before acting. And so once again, with the goal of this whole time, let Christ be formed in you. And so I just like to pray for us as we close off. And so Lord, we thank you that you are the Christ, that you are the resurrection and the life, and that there is no other. And um, I just want to take a moment and say to you, um, if you have never surrendered to the Lordship of Christ, this is a wonderful time to do that. Um, it's a wonderful time where we reminded that it was in the third day, today is the third day that we are in our homes, that Jesus rose from the dead. And not only did he ro rise from the dead, it was the first day of the week, it was a Sunday, and he spoke to his church. And he walked into the upper room, John chapter 20, and he breathed on the disciples. And he said to them, but first he said to them, peace be with you, peace be with you, my peace be with you. And then he breathed on them, and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. May that come upon you in a time such as this. And if you don't know Jesus, that you would surrender to the Lordship of Jesus and say, Jesus, I believe that you died on that cross with my son. I receive that you are the forgiveness of sins, that I'm a sinner and I need forgiveness. And thank you that you forgive me right now because you are the perfect, satisfied atonement to God the judge on my behalf. But not only did you die on that cross for me, on the third day you rose and you ascended to be with the Father, and this reminds me that I'm the righteousness of God and I can stand before you in a time such as this. I thank you for that in Jesus' name. This is a time for the church to use the language of God. This is a time for us to be great encouragers. And so the language of God says, encourage, edify, and exhort. I want to encourage us as a prophetic people. This is a time to get a word of knowledge for somebody a word of encouragement for somebody, a timely word from God through you 
can change your life forever, can put it on a different path. And so I'm just going to close off in prayer. And so may the Lord uh, face shine upon you. May his presence indwell you. May he overwhelm you with his goodness. And may you become aware more than ever of the blood of Jesus in which you are cleansed and clothed in a time such as this. And so, Father, we thank you for your loving kindness and your goodness. We thank you for the spirit of encouragement that is in us that can encourage one another in no other name but the name of Jesus. Amen and amen.